So today I want to do a short video on how to go ahead and go through a Nintendo. We're going to do this all in one take. If I mess up, you'll see where I messed up. But the goal is to get this thing done so we can get it sent out to the nicety seller on YouTube. Because she needs one and she hit me up at an auction that we had. And this was actually the one that I have had running in the background of all the auctions that I've been in. It looks horrible. Um, I just never got around to clean it up. And actually, I was using the original pin set that was in it. So today, we're going to install a brand new 72 pin connector that I picked up at the Gaming Zone in Tempe, Arizona. They also have a location in Gilbert. You guys are local. Go check them out. Again, that was the Gaming Zone. You guys are great. And they do sell these. Um, I don't know if they do rebuilds for people. But it is a, they do have a DIY section so that everybody can go in there, get their pin sets. Um, I know they have screens for, I think, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, those kind of things, the, the plastic screens that always get scratched up, battery covers, batteries for DSs, DS lights, 3DSs, all that good stuff. So with that, let's start tearing into this thing. It won't be perfect. It does have some little stress cracks in the corner, but... We're going to get a good before of how this thing looks. And we're going to get to cleaning it up. Now, I probably will use the drill to get this thing torn apart. Because that's how I roll. And I will put it back together with a regular screwdriver. That's the way I do it. Preferably for anybody doing it their first time or whatever. Use a regular screwdriver. A number two is perfect. Um, also, we're going to take apart that xenophobe. For NES and we're going to go ahead and clean it up so you guys can see how to do both in one video and we're going to try to get this thing shipped out tomorrow to nicety so she has a nice tester system to be able to test the games out before she sells them or keeps them and just plays it so with that let's get tearing into this so first thing you've got you've got six screws here on the outside Leave it just like that. This does not have to come out. It just sits there. So, no biggie. So there's the six. Pop that top off. You see how gross this thing is inside. So we're going to get all this nice and cleaned out. And get her going again. So, before I start, you've got one, two, three, four, five and six screws uh seven sorry seven screws on the outside of this to get this shield off i have done tons of these now that i'm remembering is like i said it has been a little while one screw on each side here is longer than the other for both of these and that's to help hold everything down just longer so it's got a little more you know grip Now, so that you can see, you can see there, one is longer than the other. And after removing the first side, I can tell 100% this one here towards the front. So if you're going down the side, the middle screw is the longer one. I have seen these come unrebuilt where they've got a short one in there. I mean, things happen at the factory. So you never know. But there again, the middle one is the longer one. I'm just going to pile those in a pile here. Now you can pick up on the side of this without even taking everything out. If you're going to do it this way, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing. But if you're going to do it this way, just a quick swap out from here. Just pull this tray out. This is actually the mechanism that locks your game into place. Your game actually goes in there. And then clicks into place and then your contacts would be here. We'll just set this off to the side. From here, if you're doing just the, the quick, uh, we'll call it the slip and slide method, you can raise this up a little bit and just work this thing back and forth. And there you go. This is what goes bad on the NES. Most of the time, this is it. The flashing screen, even knew they were known to do it a little bit, and you had to wiggle the game around. 
basically what you got going on here, all of these little pins on this 72 pin, pin connector, half of it sets across the, the board and half of it is where your game slides in. Then once you push that game down into place, like so, what you're doing is actually taking this that's angled and it's clamping down. So all of these pins are actually grabbing the cartridge by putting the leverage on there. So just like guitar strings, these lose their tension, therefore wearing out. So by swapping this out, you've got good grip on them again. Eventually you'll have to put another set in, you know, not like next year or anything, unless you're switching the game out every 10 seconds and reclamping it but they do just wear out that's and that was the downfall of this that's one reason they went to the top loader system and all other consoles were a top load or um like it was the the turbo graphics had a card reader in the front and on the top if i remember right uh maybe wrong on that i've only seen a couple turbo graphics since i've been doing this stuff so there's the old one actually we're just gonna go ahead and toss it now right in the trash here's our new one we're gonna wait to put that in i am gonna go ahead and pull this apart pause the video go blow it out with my air compressor you can use compressed air or however but since i've got an air compressor i might as well use it there it is look at all the chunks coming out of this thing gross it's 30 plus years of being used these are decently self-explanatory you can use your phone take a picture i've got mine running the gopro right now so i can't wire just goes on the side that's your power button reset switch these you can mark if you want i actually have check that out Okay, so we're gonna mark these. You got player one and player two. You don't need to mark both. Just mark one and you'll be fine. We're gonna go ahead, looking at this, and we're gonna mark player two right here on this heat shield on the bottom. Since when you put it together, that's what you're gonna be looking at. We'll just put a two. And actually, since I'm here, we'll go ahead and put a one just for the OCD people out there. There, we've got that part now. Push this down out of the way a little bit. Work this back and forth, it's out. This one here just pops out. And with that, you can take the cover off. Now I'm gonna go blow all this out and I will be back and we'll start putting this thing back together. All right, let's get back to it. Here's all of our pieces, all blown off. I did run this, go wash it with some uh, dish soap and blew it out with the air compressor too just to get it extra clean i like to try to keep this stuff as clean as i can with that said i'm also going to be taking the screws out here so i can pop this door off and clean it separately uh, do not use magic eraser on the front it will take the nintendo logo right off
So let's get onto this. Sometimes they will have surface rust. They didn't really put anything on here. Just the humidity gets to this stuff. So just be prepared for that. And what I'm going to do now, I've got, where did it go? Here it is, my Brasso rag. Let me get this stuff shook up really good. And throw a little bit on those contacts. On, right on the rag, just a little bit. Doesn't take much. Do the same thing with the Nintendo game afterwards. Just clean them up really good. Basically, you know, taking all the corrosion and everything off. Don't have to worry about it anywhere else on the board, just here. I mean, you can see how gross that is. So we'll do that again. Another tip, I know we did it growing up. That's just what we did, but do not blow into the cartridges. It is very bad for the, for the cartridges. Because the humidity from your breath actually corrodes the brass on the chips. And that, again, makes it to where they, they don't work. They, I've seen them get so corroded that, piece, that pieces of the chip are actually missing. So, Q-tip and rubbing alcohol. There we got some more off. More. Keep going. There we go. Nice and clean. Nice and shiny again. Both sides. There it tells you that it was for the U.S. Let's see. Take the rag, toss it to the side. Now, in order to put this back together, we need our bottom tray. This slides over the top of this. This will go on before you even think about breaking this out. That's got to go on and click right there into place so you can plug all of your other goodies in. So they kind of have these Nintendo set up where the wires are supposed to run. You don't have to put them back that way. It is convenient. They've been sitting for so long that the wires are pretty much pre-bent to go that way anyway. So we know from this, the number two controller goes on the side. Number one goes in the front. I did mark also so here's number one we're just going to plug that back in number two we'll plug in right there just push it in until it stops and our power and reset and they only go one way there it is it's plugged in that's it so just take this get the wires down out of the out of the way And this should set. Now, I always double check because sometimes a wire gets stuck under this plastic. And then you run into issues of when you screw this down, potentially cutting that wire or grounding it out and frying the Nintendo. We don't want to do that. So here's this. Now we're going to break out that brand new 72 pin connector. I know, which just like the other one. But it's nice and tight, and actually, after we get this in, you should be able to pick the whole Nintendo up by the game hanging out the front. That's how tight these things should be. So we're going to take it. The side that's closer is the side that goes to the board. The side that's, that's fat right here at the end that's angled up, that's the side that the cartridge goes in. So we'll pick this back up a little bit and just slide it on, wiggle it back and forth into place because it will be tied up against the chip. There we go. Set that back down. Double check the, that the wires are out of the way, like so. Actually, yeah, there we go, it's out of the way, that works. Everything's in place. Yep, good, okay. So that's back on. Another one to watch out for is where this tray lines up there's this there's this plastic piece right here and it's empty below, above it but it sticks out that little piece goes under the circuit board when you slide it back on so let me see 
Try to get a, the best angle I can on this. So, I'm going to pick this up a little bit. Slowly fish this back in. Come on. Or not. You never know. Sometimes these things are a little bit of, of a pain. Actually, we'll just go ahead and pick the whole thing up. Okay. Nice and slow. That connector is going to try to slide off. And there, we're under the board. Get all your wires chucked back out of the way again. There we go. That's all set into place. And you'll know too, because if you hold the chip down, this should not come up. If you put it together and you click that after you screwed it down and it just goes back up, that little tab I showed is on the wrong side of this circuit board. It has to go underneath to hold it. So there you go, that's done. I would love to use power tools, but let's keep putting this thing together. This pile of screws is right here. Let's go ahead and switch off. There's our two longer ones versus the short ones. Longer ones go in the middle. You get to this point, never put a dirty game in the, in the system. Whatever you do, after you put a new pin set in, clean the games. Never put a dirty game in there. We're still going to clean this. So we're going to set the lid back on. System's good to go. Now, let's move on to this. I've shown how to clean the outside of these before, so we're not going to go over that. Just the inside. So you're going to want the uh, Nintendo Security Bet set. You can get these on eBay. If you prefer Amazon, I don't deal with Amazon. I only do eBay. Support the smaller guys. Or local, if you can. Um, this set here I already had. But I have gotten these separately from the gaming zone. They do have them there too for people doing DIY game repair stuff. All three of these are the same size. These do have two tabs on the top. So let's see, I got it backwards. So flip that over. There you go. Pretty cruddy. And all I'm going to clean on this one, because I still need to take it apart again and do it, but I want to get the video taken care of. We're going to shake up that Brasso, and we're going to clean these contacts. So you can see they look pretty bad. They're, they're grody. Get the Brasso rag out again. A little bit, there we go. And just clean those up. you'll notice the difference because the old ones you just sometimes you could flick the game and it would pop back out so you just have to push it into place it's not even in all the way there we go okay now we'll, 
here's here you go no magic tricks we're gonna grab that by the game and as you can see still got the game you can pick the whole system up by that cartridge so they are hard to get out have a tighter tolerance on these my thumb's too big and Cool. And now that we got this thing hooked up, temporarily back where it was, I did plug it. All I did was plug it in, left the game in like we had it. There we go. Check that out. We are good to roll. Pop that game out. Try another one of my clean games that I keep here cleaned. You see, it's the same copy. Good to go. Throw in the best video game ever made. Best series. Look at that. The music's already stuck in my head. Come on, come on. Check it out. Best game ever. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for sticking around for the whole video. If you don't mind, like and subscribe at the bottom. That would mean a lot to us. We're almost at 100 subscribers. And for us, that's like the first milestone. I'm glad you stuck around because we have an announcement to make. It's like midnight. My wife's already in bed. She's listed stuff all day while I edited videos and worked on other projects. But again, thank you for sticking it out. This Friday, we're going to have a live auction on Cajun Roots Resellers live channel starting at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Like I said a live auction, going to be all kinds of cool stuff. You never know what's going to be there for sale, and you never know who's going to show up to sell that stuff. So if you don't mind, come on by and check it out with us. Should be a great time. Down below, I'm going to link for that auction. Also, I'm going to have a link for the Gaming Zone since they hooked me up with the pin set for that Nintendo. I did buy it. I'm not sponsored, but the guys are great. Great place to get tools, accessories, games, whatever you need to get that system back going or just hang out with your friends and play some games. So I highly recommend checking them out. We'll see you on the next episode.